And good evening, everyone. So as Al says, I'm Jane Golding, Chair of the Community Archives and Heritage Group, and I'm so pleased to be with you this evening. So a very warm welcome to you all, and thank you for joining. Um, and I'd like to give an extra special welcome to our award winners and their supporters. So we'll be shortly announcing who the winners are. And this really is a very special part of the Cars Year. For it's all of you, our members and supporters that make Cars what it is. And tonight we celebrate innovation and best practice, and also the rich and diverse stories that are brought together by community um, collections and activities. Our next award um, is our Gathering and Preserving Heritage Award for this year. Um, and again, awful lot to, to sort of look at and talk about, but we were particularly impressed with this project around the real scale of work and effort that it had taken place um, around a cemetery restoration which again you'll hear more about and might be a clue for some people. Um, and alongside this was a real range of activities and platforms that were designed to ensure that stories were maintained, which you know is so important in the work that we do. The, the whole point of community archives is to hear different voices and, and hold them and capture them, create a place for them in sort of time and space almost. Um, it was really clear to us that audiences had been given a real wide range of ways in which they could engage with this heritage. Um, so we just felt that this group had to be the winners for this year. So the winners of the Gathering and Preserving Heritage Award 2021 are Leaveston Hospital History Association. And Martin, big round of applause. And Martin, if I could just ask you to say a word or two. Thanks, Alan. Um, yeah, this is really incredible to be recognized by a group such as the Community Archives and Heritage Group and all its members and everything. Um, we've been working on this. I've been working on this for over 13 years now and, and in partnership with Three Rivers District Council's Leisure Department. I think we really have been able to gather uh, and preserve um, a great deal of information and history and heritage of, of several local features one of the biggest important things that I've found out from all this um, was the the history and heritage of all the people that worked at Leavston Asylum, Leavston Hospital, St. Pancras Orphanage, everything that we have been trying to preserve over the years. Though, all those memories and all those um, um, stories uh, of all the people, places, and things that made up this cultural heritage were really at risk at um, of being lost. And again, with, in partnership with Three Rivers District Council, we have been able to make sure that these uh, memories and, and uh, um, these stories uh, have been preserved and presented in a variety of different ways uh, so everybody can, can access them. Um, a lot of people that worked at the hospital, a lot of people that had any association with the hospital over time um, had gotten to a point where they didn't talk about it. They uh, didn't talk about their parents working at that place, that hospital. Um, and it was really sad to see people not uh, being able to talk about their families and their association with the hospital. So over the last four or five years, we really have been able to give people a sounding board and people have become much, much more comfortable uh, about uh, talking about their time at the hospitals and their association with it and opening up dialogue about the whole mental health learning disabilities thing, which the hospital was known for uh, even back when it started in the 1870s. Um, so it's really great that we've had an opportunity to do this and, and um, you know, thank you very much for recognizing the work of everybody that's uh, put time into it. Brilliant, thank you, Martin. Then the last thing to do, and this is somewhat traumatic because it feels a little bit like you're choosing between your children. Um, and having spoken to all three of you lots over the last few which is very difficult because you're all fantastic and very, very worthy winners, but we did have to pick an overall winner for the year. Um, and basically it came down to points scored by all the judges and, you know, any one of your really, really worthy winners, but we had to pick one. And so the overarching winner for this year, Community Archive and Heritage Group of Year is the Leaveston Hospital History Association. So Martin's done a very good job of looking surprised there. That's great. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if I can put you on the spot, if there's any more you'd like to say in regard to that. 
Um, gosh, I, I don't know. It's still, um, it, it's great. Um, it's just such a recognition of all the time and effort that all the volunteers and, and all the people we've been working with over the years, um, it's just really fabulous to, to see them recognized in this way because none of us ever got started uh, in community heritage or, or you know local history because of recognition. We do it because we're passionate about making sure that the history of our communities uh, aren't lost. And um, this just uh, is recognition that we've actually been successful. So um, it's, uh, it's really great. Um, it's been an interesting three years and we've, we've accomplished quite a lot. So I'm very, very, thank you very much for, uh, for, for everybody from the Leeson Hospital History Association. Brilliant. Lovely. Thank you very much. Well, three very well. So difficult on Zoom, but perhaps we could have a round of applause for all of our three worthy winners, be it like that or hands or silent. <laughs> There's some excitement going on in some of those Zoom boxes, I can see. So that's great. Thank you. Um, we're really excited to acknowledge all three groups because we really, as I say, I've been having lots of conversations with all three of you over the last few weeks, and I think you're all amazing. So it's been a real privilege. Um, so the next thing for me really is to put the three of you on the spot and um, to give us a short presentation about each of your projects and, and we're actually doing it in the order that we've we've announced things there so Hugh's going up first thank you very much Hugh and then we'll move to Sue and hopefully Anne will be with us to join her then and then Martin at the end so, um, so this is going to be kind of a, a brief one um the Leafson Hospital History Association was founded uh, by myself in 2011. What we wanted to do, what I wanted to do at that time was to make sure that the people, places and events that made up the uh, history and cultural heritage of the Leafson Asylum Hospitals were not forgotten. Uh, the hospital had been around in the area of uh, Abbots Langley since uh, 1868 when it was uh, starting to be built. It was first conceived by the Metropolitan Asylums Board. Uh, for the purpose of basically just uh, providing a, uh, an asylum, a safe place of refuge for all the people that were living on the streets and had medical uh, conditions, mental health conditions at the time. So I got started in 2008 when I became the first park ranger at Three Rivers, for Three Rivers District Council. And um, it wasn't shortly after I started uh, working um, for the council at Leaveston Country Park People wanted to tell me all about the old asylum that used to be here, and there was an orphanage across the road, and Jack the Ripper was buried in the old East Lane uh, Cemetery. So uh, luckily, the latter one has proven to be a, a pretty much an urban legend, but it's still a, a legend that is told uh, to this day. So the um, parts that made up the uh, Leaveston Hospital or the surrounding areas at the time, and this goes back to uh, 1870 when it first opened, was the Leafson Asylum Hospital from 1870 until 1995, the St. Pancras Workhouse and School, which was just across the road, uh, a road at that time, which was called Asylum Road, which is known as uh, College Road now. The Canadian Hospital, which took over the old St. Pancras Workhouse uh, back in 1939, Canadian uh, Royal Air Force took it over as a hospital to take care of their servicemen uh, on their way to and on their way back from uh, World War II. It became the Khaki University where the Canadian hospitals or the Canadian uh, uh, RAF soldiers were able to train. You can see the big white buildings here. Uh, the big white buildings here were actually the billets. So this was about 500 Canadian soldiers that were living here and attending school at the old uh, St. Pancras orphanage and everything. So this is the South side. This is uh, Asylum Road, uh, College Road uh, later on. Um, and that was uh, pretty much the area that we were, uh, we were trying to include in all this history and heritage and everything. So what I did is in about 2009, I realized um, that uh, I had enough information or at least a little bit of information to start conducting uh, what I termed the uh, brief walk through time. Um, so we would go on, on three and a half, four hour walks around the site and we would cover some of the old buildings and uh, some of the grounds of the old hospital and everything. And this started to become really, really popular. Um, we would have anywhere from 30 to uh, 50 people attend the walks. Uh, and that went on for uh, some time. It was also during this time that I was able to start going out into the community. So I started getting calls and requests from a lot of the local schools. 
and a lot of the local uh, history groups and U3A groups and everything to talk about uh, the Leafston Asylum, Leafston Hospital. And it seemed like whenever I started to um, talk to these people, when I would go out, people would show up and they would have artifacts. So they would be donating things uh, that were family heirlooms to them um, that were part of their family's uh, connection to the hospital. They had relatives that worked there. They may have worked there themselves. So they were always willing to donate stuff. And this kind of became the start of collecting uh, all the archives and everything that we have now. Um, in uh, 2015 or slightly before that, I guess it may have officially started, uh, Three Rivers District Council realized that, that uh, gathering and preserving all the history of um, three of the main employers of the area um, was a pretty good deal. Uh, um, when they started mentioning that they were doing this, people really came forward. They were really encouraging and they really wanted to see this history and heritage um, uh, preserved uh, in the local area. So Leaston, uh, or Three Rivers District Council Leisure Department came up with the idea for the Leaston Country Park Heritage Project. It started in 2015. And they really did go um, put a lot of time and effort uh, into consulting with local residents, local history groups, um, a variety of other people to just figure out how could we best display all this history and heritage and everything, um, which is probably part of the biggest part of the project. It, it really created, um, a very visual way uh, in a very variety of ways to just really um, show the history and heritage and everything. Um, the three parts, the three main features of the heritage project were called mines, machines, and movies. Um, and this relates again to the three largest employers in the area, um, which starting off with the Leafston Asylum. So the, the old Leafston Asylum and Leafston Hospital um, which ran from 1868 till 1930. Then it was taken over by the London uh, County Council. It was renamed the Leavesden Mental Hospital. And then it was taken over by the NHS when that was formed in 1948. And it became just the Leavesden Hospital. And these were three of the sculptures that were created to just visually show what connection the community had with um, um, with the people and, and the staff and the volunteers and everybody that used to work at, at this hospital. Um, so you can see some of the some of the features we have here. This is a, a little um, artistic sculpture representing the um, the the evolution of, of what people used to think about mental health care. I mean, the um, the people that first started working at the hospital were called guards. Then they were um, were uh, referred to as uh, attendants and then they became mental health nurses. The um, center one that we have here is the Remembrance Garden. Um, and that basically is just uh, remembering all the people that worked or volunteered at the hospital. This uh, little structure here is the um, uh, Remembrance Wall. And it kind of um, really defines what it was like to be on, on which side of the wall were you on. Uh, a lot of people like to think that the uh, hospital like Leavesden and its sister hospital on the south side of London, which was um, St. Lawrence's Asylum in Caterham, were these places actually built with a lot of walls around them to keep the patients in or to keep the public out. Um, so this wall is kind of representing just what kind of reflection you have and what side of the wall are you actually on. So this um, relates just to the Leavesden Asylum Hospitals part of the Leavesden Country Park uh, Heritage Project. So this was the um, the machines part of it, which was the Leavesden Aerodrome and the um, Rolls-Royce plant, which was in operation from 1942 until 1995. Um, and, and this was uh, established to support the war effort. So Halifax bombers and the mosquito bombers were all manufactured here and everything. And a lot of the people that worked in the area or lived in the area, they either had a job at the hospital or they had a job at the Rolls-Royce plant. And the stories that all these people um, can tell about being there is really fantastic. And this is one of the things that we wanted to capture. So um, this was captured in, in um, three separate uh, sculptures uh, in the park, uh, just, just about the uh, Leafson Aerodrome and, and uh, the Rolls-Royce plant. The third one was the movies. Um, we are lucky enough to, um, after, after the uh, Leafson Aerodrome closed, in uh, 1995, um, there was a production company that was looking to make uh, the latest uh, 007 film, GoldenEye. 
but they couldn't find any place at Shepherd and Film Studios, Pinewood Studios, Elstree, everybody was filled up. So somebody mentioned, well, there's this old um, airfield, um, there's this old uh, um, aerodrome, uh, a lot of big hangars and everything, we can use that. And they actually made GoldenEye back in 1995, which um, they thought that was a pretty good idea. So they formed the uh, Leibson Film Company or the Leibson Film Studios. And one of the first big users of that film studio um, back in the early 2000s was Warner Brothers Studios. They came here to make Harry Potter and they thought the place was so great that in 2008, they bought the whole thing and turned it into the Leavesden, uh, excuse me, Warner Brothers Studios uh, Leavesden. So these are just a couple of things, um, another set of three sculptures that are in tribute or in recognition of the local film industry, um, which again, we've collected a lot of stuff. So uh, over time, 13 years now, I've been collecting things and people have been donating things. And these are just a few of the things that um, the Leafs and Hospital History Association has in its archives. Um, we have things like um, teddy bears that were made by the uh, patients, coat hangers, um, stools of various sizes that were made by the patients as part of their therapy project. We have an old wall clock that goes back to 1931. We have a telephone from the uh, mortuary, which is um, uh, one of the favorite pieces of, of, of one of our volunteers. Um, we have the, um, a couple of the, uh, the big pieces, uh, some of the, the, the more popular pieces that we have in our archives are the uh, Stewart's logbook or the Stewart's report book. Um, now this goes back to um, 18, uh, 1895, it covers a period from 1895 to 1899. It was written in by the chief steward, Mr. Uh, Henry Chapin. And it's one of the few, if not the only written records of what happened at the asylum during that time that survived. A lot of the records were damaged in the early 1900s. So a lot of the really old records um, relating to the hospital were damaged. So this is a very rare piece that we have, uh, all handwritten, very interesting. It tells the day-to-day -day operations of, of what it took to actually run an asylum back in the Victorian times. A couple of the unique entries that are in here is it is one of the few written records we have of the cholera epidemic, which we have reason to believe caused the death of about 5,000 patients at the hospital, which were all laid to rest in the mass grave, which is um, still on site. It's also the only record of the, um, uh, the murder of Caroline Ansel, who was a patient at the hospital uh, back in 1899. And her sister, Marianne Ansel, who lived in St. Albans, was always kind enough to send Caroline some cakes and treats and things. Unfortunately, they were all laced with phosphorus poisoning. So Mary Jane Ansel was tried in St. Albans for the uh, murder of her sister. And she was hung in July of 1899, being the last woman ever uh, hung in Hertfordshire County. And it's the only written record we know of uh, comment by the uh, management committee of the hospital that still exists to this day. The item on the right is my personal favorite. That's referred to as the Abbott's Langley Dollhouse. This is a very, very large and very rare, unique piece of architectural modeling. Um, it's rare for a, a lot of reasons. Uh, one, it has something to do with the hospital because when the NHS took over in uh, 19, uh, when the N NHS took over in 1948, um, they were going to build another general hospital uh, on the south side um, of the park. And so they had a very well-known architectural modelist named Kenneth McCutcheons uh, from Shepherd Bush, Shepherd's Bush, London. And they designed this little uh, architectural model to show what a hospital would have looked like had they built it back in the early 1950s. And this is a rare piece because it is extremely large and they didn't last that long. In fact, we, we um, almost lost this piece uh, three times. This was heading to the skip uh, until it was recovered from the um, Vinehouse Surgery in Abbott's Langley, who had been nice enough to store it after one of their doctors had uh, gotten it from the hospital. Um, it was donated to the Leafson Hospital History Association, and it actually spent about six years in my living room until we found a place to properly um, display it. It's a rare place, and very unique because it is large. A lot of them didn't survive that long um, because they were too big to keep around. It's all handmade. It was made by a very internationally known uh, architect, Kenneth McCutcheon. And each one of the rooms has a little light in there. So you can see the lighting board, the switches on the left-hand side there. Um, that's where all the light switches are and everything. And we figured out sometime later that it was powered by batteries, which were stored in the base. So in the wooden base here is all the batteries that used to run this. 
Um, so we were actually able to move it into the Heritage Center, the Hive Heritage Center, and it was renovated in November of 2019. So hopefully this rare piece will be around for another 75 years. So in 2019, the, uh, par as part of the um, Leafs and Country Park Heritage Project, the Three Rivers District Council Leisure Department designed and built us um, the Hive Heritage Center, which stands for Heritage Information, Volunteer and Visiting, and the Environment Center. So this is the center of all things history and heritage uh, in Leafston Country Park, uh, and it's been a great place to, to have to store and to display and get all our artifacts um, out to the public. So we get about uh, anywhere from 20 to 30 visitors um, every day that we're open uh, for our open sessions. And um, people will come in, they'll look at things and they'll come back later with some memorabilia that they have or they'll remember something. So the archive keeps in increasing. Um, one of the biggest projects that we've been recently worked on and one that I think means so much to everybody that was involved in it um, including the, the Three Rivers uh, District Council project officers who really became really super involved in this uh, project, along with our, a lot of our members and everything, was the Leafston Asylum Hospital, Chapel of the Good Shepherd, East Lane Cemetery, um, which existed from 1868 to 1995. So it was located just north, um, just north of the hospital itself. So, um, whoops. So this is the main hospital. These are all the buildings and everything. The entire acreage of the hospital was 85 acres um, just for the Leafston Asylum Hospitals. You can see the main administration building here, which is still around. This is the uh, Chapel of the Good Shepherd, which is still there. And this is the uh, Recreation Hall, which was built in 1901. So these are all the buildings on uh, the right side of the screen is the men's buildings. Um, you can see the um, men's buildings or men's wards are all here. The women's wards were all here. Everything was definitely segregated and separated. This was one of the um, tuberculosis wards, which were specially built uh, along with the hospital for the treatment of tuberculosis. Um, this was the, uh, all this area here was originally the farm field. So they had over 42 acres that they harvested just to feed all the patients and staff in the hospital when it opened in 1870. So it was um, all self-sufficient because of the farming and operation and everything here. The original cemetery was located right up here, right next to the sewage treatment plant, which inevitably um, we believe led to the cholera epidemic. We believe that one of the um, sewage pipes that went down to the sewage treatment plant actually burst and the uh, contaminated uh, sewage got into the water system, the wells, the two aquifers that were located right here. Unfortunately, that was fed back up into the hospital and the patients and staff were using this and it caused the cholera epidemic that led to the, um, the death of over 5,000 uh, patients and the mass grave. So this is where it all started. You can see the uh, farmer's cottage is there, the sewage treatment plant. The original cemetery, which they enlarged in um, 18, uh, 1868, they, they had to enlarge it, which um, is where we believe that, uh, where we have good reason to believe that the mass grave is. The new cemetery started in 1905 or 1906 and went on until the hospital closed in 1995. Um, unfortunately, going back to about 1959, unfortunately, going back to 1990, or, um, um, the early, uh, early 1959, uh, the hospital started to remove and relocate a lot of the headstones and everything. So this is what we found when we first started investigating and all the headstones had been moved to the back. A lot of them were broken. Numerous headstones were missing. Um, these headstones here are actually located um, where the mass grave is. Uh, you can see in the, in the background there is the old sewage treatment plant and everything. So we didn't have a lot of information about it. In fact, um, in the early 2000s, uh, 2008, this is what the cemetery looked like at that time. So it had been pretty much um, not been uh, taken care of. A lot of the grave uh, headstones were missing. All the records for the cemetery had been lost over time because of changes in administration and um, moving of headstones and uh, uh, different assignments and, and uh, 
just just not uh, being able to ha hang on to the records and everything. So we were really at a loss as to just what we were going to find when we started all this. Um, we did have a set of photographs that were taken in 1985 that were donated to us by the uh, Watford Museum. So you can see this is what the um, cemetery would have looked like. Again, a lot of the headstones and everything are missing. But you can see in the foreground that there are some cremation marker stones there. So we kind of use this as a starting point. Uh, when we did our archaeological survey, we started at this point here and just to see what we could find. Now, there were always about uh, maybe 30 headstones or 30 marker stones that you could always see on site, but we really didn't know how many we were going to find. So we filled out all the paperwork and everything, and we got all the permissions, and we worked very closely with Three Rivers District Council about what we were going to do and what kind of information we were looking for. Um, we also worked very closely with the University of York's archaeological part, department and the Discovering England's burial sites uh, scheme that they were heading up at the time. So we had a lot of really good experience um, behind us when we started this. Um, so in um january of 2019 we decided to get dirty so we gathered together about 14 volunteers from the leafson hospital history association um, we trained them in a four-hour training session on just how to record all the information that we had to um, to bring all this uh, information and history and heritage to life so we spent three very cold very wet very muddy days as you can tell uh, out in the search, out in the cemetery, um, doing our survey, and lo and behold, as we started looking around, based on just those photographs we had from the Watford Museum, we started to find row after row after row of very neatly laid out cremation marker stones. And at the end of the first day, we had uncovered 310 of them. So we were a little above what we thought we were going to find, about 50, and we ended up finding 310 the first day. At the end of the last day, at the end of the third day, we uncovered a remarkable 510 cremation marker stones, 40 names of patients or staff that were at rest in the cemetery and 23 monuments were also relocated or located um, that had been laid all over the area. So now we had all this uh, information and everything. Um, it took me six months to put all this information into uh, any kind of, of readable form. I was also very lucky to find a local genealogist by the name of Jill Durrell, and she spent six months researching all the names um, of all the people that we could find, um, the whole 573 of them. And she was able to come up with all their backstories, where they were born, what their, um, where their parents uh, were born, who their siblings were, um, and this is the information that had been lost um, for, um, well, many years. Um, this information had been lost to the public for over 100 years. So we discovered we ended up with um, 573, but as, as it happens when you uh, happen to have somebody who just manages to trip over these things whenever she can, uh, Emma found another one in February of 2021, um, so we're still finding them uh, even a year after we did the initial survey. So they've all been re reinstated, they've all been repaired, we have the list, and we were able to put up a memorial wall. This again was part of the um, Leafston Country Park um, Heritage Project, and the council was very keen on reinstating a wall that was similar to what the original hospital would have looked like. We were able to put up a stone um, in memory of all the people uh, that were at rest in, in the cemetery. Um, and it became, once we, once we put all the names and everything together, uh, it became the um, Leafston, Hosp Leafston Asylum Hospital, Chapel of the Good Shepherd, East Lane Cemetery Register of Names. Um, it's 61 pages long, uh, contains 574 names and details. And as far as we know, it is the only written record of all the people, um, or at least these people, uh, that are at rest in the cemetery that exists because all the other records were gone. So that's pretty much just a real short one. I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to thank all the people responsible for bringing all this history and, and heritage um, uh, to light and making it available um, to everybody. So thank you to Three Rivers District Council, Lever, Leisure Officers, Charlie Gomes, Joe Copley, Lisa Cook, 
Elaine Johnson and Emma Drake, the third generation park ranger, to the Watford Museum and to my very supportive partner in all of this, Emma Frost, and all the members of the Leafston Hospital History Association. Uh, it's really been a, um, it's been an, an emotional experience. We've had, because of all the work that we've been able to do in partnership with Three Rivers District Council, um, we've really been able to connect people who have been looking for their relatives, um, who they thought was in the hospital, might've been in the hospital. We've now been able to, um, because of this register of names, we've now been able to direct them to the hospital and to the last resting place of their relatives. We've had one individual contact us saying that they were looking for three of their uncles, which they didn't know they had. We were able to locate the three uncles uh, burial sites. We had one lady contact us that said her father, who she hadn't seen in 35 years, um, was a, an employee of the hospital. And through our Facebook group page, she was actually able to locate her father. Um, and so that was pretty good. And that's, that's what makes these kind of projects so important, I think is there is a big connection to the local community and the people. And um, that's, that's why we did it. And I just would like to thank the um, Community Archives and Heritage Group for, for their support and recognition in all the work that we've done. And um, I look forward to being a bigger part of the group in the future. Is that it? Did it work? Thank you, Roger. That was brilliant. Thank oh. you very much. Very good. Big, big round of applause. The only he can hear me for the book. <laughs> but hands going up and clapping. That was really wonderful. Thank you, Martin. Really you wonderful. It, it's funny you say emotional, because I actually found that quite emotional, actually, just, just listening to you telling this. And and I think for us this year with the awards, um, like I say, you know, we're, we're separating well-being, gathering and preserving community engagement, but actually all of you are doing really amazing, similar things that overlap with each other. And, and, and you know, it yeah. wasn't just, yeah, it wasn't just the, the, the history and heritage of one thing, you know, like, like we, I concentrated on, on Leafs and Asylum, Leafs and Hospital, but, but when we started getting into it, it became very obvious to not only myself, but Three Rivers District Council that, there's a lot more heritage and history in this, this community of Abbots Langley and Leavesden and North Watford. Um, and that's where we got into really, you know, looking into recognizing the, the aerodrome and um, uh, the film studios, because they've been such a big part of the local community. Ever, you can't talk to anybody that is, lives in those areas that didn't have a family member that worked at Rolls Royce or the hospital, or, you know, has a connection to these things. Um, and as I mentioned before, one of the things I was most concerned with was all this, all this knowledge, all this, this oral history, which, which is another thing I didn't get to mention, is both Three Rivers District Council and myself have embarked on an oral history recording. So I've gone out and spoken and recorded um, at least, I think I have 47 interviews with people who used to work at the hospital. Um, and like when you remember Hugh's presentation, actually hearing people tell their stories is so much different than reading it in a book or having, I mean, to hear their words and for them to be able to tell their stories in their own words is a real treat. And, and, and we have to capture those because like I'm finding out, a lot of the people that have a history with the hospital aren't getting any younger. Mm -hmm. And if we don't record this history, if we don't get this all down somewhere, you know, we're going to lose it. And, and that would be horrible. So, um, I'm just looking if I could just, um, Alec, is it okay if I go to the questions? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay, I'm just... Roger, Roger has just asked, um, as a young man, I lived near Uxbridge and later worked in Northwood. So fairly local. How big an area did patients come from? In regards to, in regards to the Leaston Asylum, it was built north of London because it was supposed to take the catchment of, of North London and anything north of that. So the St. Lawrence Asylum in Caterham was on the south side of London. So they were the two sister facilities that were built. So we would have people from, well, anywhere really, North London, um, Northwood, Pinner, you know, Rickmansworth, um, as far up as Camden Town. Um, we have one professor at, um, at uh, Oxford University who researched three patients that came from Camden Town to Leavesden. Um, but they would come from all over. Um, 
So the catchment was kind of north of London, but they would come as far from as Liverpool or anybody that needed to find a facility to take care of a loved one or themselves would, you know, would usually end up in a, in a place like that. So. Brilliant. Um, I'm just looking for more questions for you, but it just seems to be people saying how fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Elaine's oh, there. Yeah. Um, yes. And, and we're going to be continuing on. Um, but like most, um, most history groups um, and the, the uh, Clemens Hall history group, they just mentioned it is, is, is space. Um, we really only have a, a small portion of our, our archives um, and memorabilia and artifacts and everything on display for the public. So space is always a problem for small groups like ours and everything. Um, we are going more uh, on the virtual world. So our website is being built every day. We're adding things to it. So people will be able to access all the archives and everything, and uh, primarily the register of names. So if somebody's looking, they find our website, they can actually go to the register, they can look to see if a relative is there. And I'm kind of thinking that that, that seems to be the way going uh, in the future is putting a lot of it, you know, virtually. I mean, we've had, we've had two very, very successful Heritage Day events, um, which the, um, the Community Arts Development Officer from Three Rivers District Council um, Elaine Johnson has, orga has organized in the past, 2016, 2017. Um, and I have to say that because I've just noticed she's, she's with us here. So I've just seen her name. So I have to say something nice about her because <laughs> I want her to do more of them. But we are, we are planning, we hopefully um, planning one for uh, 2022. So we'll be able again to bring this um, uh, all to life and everything. Uh, one of the other ways that we really found out was really fascinating to draw people in, not only going out to the schools and everything, which we've done quite a bit of, although it's a little difficult to get into the schools because we, we have to match their curriculum so exactly at the right time and the right subject and everything. So, mm -hmm. um, But um, when we have these events is, is the living history uh, walks. Now, I've been doing the walks um, since 2009, and luckily I have um, Emma who's going to be taking them, take them over for me. Um, but um, the heritage days that we do, the living history. So we would get you know people together, dress up in costume, and we'd actually would portray characters um, that we knew the history of that used to work at the asylum. And people find that absolutely fascinating. So that's just another way that um, you know working with creative people like Elaine, you know we can we can do things a little different and make history a bit more fun and a bit more interesting for people. So. Um, Oh, that's brilliant. I can't see. I can't see any more questions. So. No, I can't. Does anyone have any questions? About anybody want to unmute or stick a hand up? Or I don't think so. Yeah. Huge, huge congratulations going on there, isn't it? For yeah, no, lots, it's lovely. Lots of people have... being inspired. No, no. Well, if if there are no more questions, I guess that kind of brings it to me to bring the evening to a close, really. Um, I, oh, Jane's popping up, so I'll rope her in, that's lovely. But no, I, I, I have to say, I mean, I, I'm not sure how long I've been involved in the awards, but I've, I've just found this year really exciting. And as I say, this, this kind of crossover, even though we're looking at different things, how everybody is doing such amazing, you know, everybody's involved in well-being, everybody's gathering, preserving, and everybody's engaging with groups of people in amazing ways. So it was, yeah, just such an interesting year. I've, I've, it sounds very melodramatic, but I found it very inspiring. It's, it's been very inspiring for me to see what you're all doing. And, and this evening's been very much like that as well. So I don't know if you have any final words you'd like to add in, uh, Jane, or Martin, or... I no, I'm, I'm good. I just, you know, I, I'm just, I really have to say that I was really happy to find the Community Archives and Heritage Group because unfortunately, sometimes if you're not a big museum, you know, and you don't have the certification and everything, it's hard to get recognized for what you're doing and get financial support and, and, you know, uh, all the rest of it. So to have you guys and the membership that you have in the UK and, I, and Ireland uh, is absolutely great um, for us, for a small little group. So, so thank you for that.
Thanks, thank you. I think that's what we, you know, we strive to be about, isn't it, Jane? And, and you know, and this is why, you know, going forward, I mean, we, we usually use the AGM in the conference as a kind of appeal for people to get more involved and, and you know, and, and to give us your voice, really, because I say, you know, we're all we're all doing very similar things and we're all doing very different things with different groups and communities. And, and the more the more it sounds like a cliche, but the more you put into the, the group and the more you're part of it, the more we can do. And, and hopefully get everybody's voice heard so okay well i'll just say a final few words then and it's it's great that all these connections are being made and it has really been very inspiring and humbling to hear uh, the work of, of all of the groups and all of the presentations have, have been excellent um so thank you to all, all of you thank you to everybody who's contributed and thank you to alan and everyone involved in bringing this evening together it's been a real, real pleasure. Thank you.